Katrina and on Symphony Connection, and thanks to them to cancel, uh, they've put on some COVID workshops to keep you engaged and um, reduce the boredom at home. So today uh, we're going to be doing some workshops on upcycling old garments that no longer fit you or got holes, um, and we're going to turn those into new accessories. Here is the jacket. Um, I've already taken the zip out and used that for another project. Um, but we're going to use the back today. It's going to be easier to work with this if you cut, cut it all apart. So I'm just going to cut down the seam allowance. I'm just using the back panel only, so. I don't want to cut the bangs, so I'll probably use that for another project. I'm going to cut up the seams because how long, just so I can get it nice and flat to lay out. Along the reg raglan sleeve. Now, if you really want to be picky, get it unpick the seams if you'd like, but I don't see much of a point unless you're really stretching for fabric. I'm going to do the same again to the lining. I'm going to use the lining of the jacket to line the neck wrap. Could have cut the lining and the main at the same time, but I didn't want to cut the band. why I like upcycling garments is even though you might not have it, want to wear your garment anymore and you can always give it to the op shop they don't necessarily always sell your clothes so what happens then um, they might they might go off and be made into rags they might be shipped over to a third world country um, or more often than not anything unsold ends up in landfill so if you can reuse your garments into another and make something else out of it you're saving the environment So this is the pattern that I'm going to use. This is only half. So one side is going to be the fold. Obviously I can't, I'm not fitting it across here, but I'm actually going to make it double and have a seam at the very at the center back for both lining and main. Again, I'll, these dimensions I'll have available for you to download. Uh, with this pattern, I'll have um, positioning of buttons on the pattern as well. 
you can have different ways to button it up. longer you make the wrap, the, light, the wider you make the wrap, the longer the wrap has to be. So if your wrap isn't long, you can just make it narrower. So what I'm going to do first, I'll just work out how wide, how long this piece is going to be. This is the shortest piece, but it's going to determine how long I can make the, my wrap on the bees. And then I'll just cut the same out of this one. Oh, sorry, I didn't straighten that. that side off. Oh, I get a pair that same same way. with the same allowance this wrap will be about 73 centimeters long I'll sew this closed no, so this one closed I'm going to leave it back opened a little bit so we can turn it inside out but I'm going to close this front one and I'm just going to sort of test it on me and see if we need to make it narrower. Back up. So this will be the centre back. sit at the back and you can see that it's just too wide it's, it's pulling pulling over so we'll just trim that down a bit you fold it over and that'll help you with a straight line With upcycling, you, you need, to, need to choose things you can sort of play with. There's never going to be a real hard and fast rule or a pattern 
that you need. You can't just, you'll have to alter like this. I'm going to have a snap under here and it's going to keep your neck nice and warm. So this will come out a little bit. Once you've got it all pinned, buttoned up, it does, it does come out like that a bit. So we're going to go with this one, this width. And then you're going to make sure your lining's the same. your back for the lining close but lever opening so you can turn it inside out. Make sure you get the right size together. Make that hole, didn't I? It's okay. If you get to make a hole like I have, it's just a matter of opening it up. Sewing is always I don't know anybody that doesn't make ever make a mistake. Beauty of the Ampicus. Got a hole to turn it. I just double stitch those holes so they don't rip open, so that when you're turning the the seam doesn't rip or come undone. Right sides together. If you want to press the seam flat, by all means, do so. Just make sure that your seams are together. I like flat seams. So I just like to pin those flat. My thumbs and fingers don't want to work today. started down sewing down here and the fabric was slipping all over the place a bit so it's making it a bit harder to keep everything in line so I've stopped and I have um, pulled out and pinned the rest of the wrap so that I doesn't slip around. The pinning before I haven't had to do that because I've used other fabrics and it hasn't slipped and slided around um, so hence the reason why I thought I'd be able to get away with that pinning but anyway pinned now and back on track.
So I've just realized when I've gone to do the buttonholes that I've forgotten to fuse the end. So what I've done done is just turn back inside and I've cut a strip of fusing. I'm just going to press it down here. It's just so that it doesn't pull the threads of the fabric. Okay. Before you turn it inside out, you want to clip the corners off. And if you've got really wide seams, you might just want to trim those down a little as well. Cor trimming the corners make the corners a little neater. When you do that. Now if you've got a corner turner or pointer, I use these clippers, I just close them. If you've got a poker, it makes it a lot easier. And just keep those corners nice and sharp. Now, this hole, you can either stitch it up by your hand, slip stitch, or if you come from a production world, which is where I come from, I, we um, make hundreds of garments, well, I'm involved in making hundreds of garments at a time, we actually stitch that clothes for the machine. Just really edge stitch it, really close and edge stitch. If you've got sensitivities, um, skin sensitivities, you might like to Slip, slip stitch it as a personal personal preference. Nice and closed. I'm going to press that. I'm going to try and get these nice sharp, um, sharp folds. I tend to press it like this. Get as much close as possible into those things, into the corners. Don't know if my irons. Oh yeah, it's working. Low temperature for synthetic. It just makes now ironing these flat a little easier. If you iron it from the right side, you'll know you'll get a better finish because you don't want the lining visible. It won't matter if you've got a little bit of main fabric overhanging the back, but you don't want your lining overhanging in front.
this this fabric is never going to press super flat unfortunately it's the nature of this sort of fabric um, and that's why I'm going to I'll have to top stitch the edges but if you depending on your fabric you might not have to top stitch if you don't want the top stitching there See what I mean? It's easier to get a nice crisp. I tend to work with a bit more with natural fibres. They're a bit easier to work with and they're better for the environment. But you can't have everything natural sometimes. Edge stitch along the top. Now you can do six mil or you can do edge as the stitching width around the edge is completely up to you. Now I'm going to use my foot line as a guide.
trim your threads off and then we can work out where we're going to put the button. So I've decided I'm going to put a couple of buttons here, maybe three. I like a bit of odd numbers when it comes to buttons. Up there, and then I'm just going to put a snap in behind here so that stays up and doesn't drop and drag. And uh, we'll come back later when the process is finished. So I've just realised that I forgot to push record when I was doing the sewing with buttonholes on. So I'm just going to explain that step that I did to, for you. I want three buttons on the end of this. So I place the buttons like so. And I've just marked there and to make there to start with. And then to make sure and there. And to make sure I have them in online and the correct spacing I measured. So for these buttons, these are 1.2, 1.3 or 12, 12 to 13 mil. So I've decided I put them two and a half centimeters apart from each other. And then I've done made the sewing the buttonholes. And then we come to pop them into position. So once you've got your buttonholes in position, I fold it up like I would be wearing it. And I've come and marked the middle of the each buttonhole onto the underlayer. And you can see very faint dots there, one, two, three. And again, I've made, made sure that they're two and a half centimeters away from each other. And then I can hand sew on the buttons. But while I'm doing that, I'm also gonna hand sew a snap on this corner and the other half above it so that's going to be just there so that when it's on it sits and it doesn't fall so this one here remember it was quite short in length um, and it sits closer to the neck this is one that I've made earlier and it's longer. The width is a uh, little bit narrower than this one, actually. I prefer ones that sit away from my neck a bit more. Not only can I just pop them over my head, I just, I've got a bit more room around the neck. And this is made out of an old jumper. I kept the buttons that was on from the old cardigan, actually. I kept the buttons from the cardigan. So you can make them all different widths and lengths to suit your preference and but also what the garments allowed you to get out it was fabric wise I, i've had this cardigan for how uh, many years <laughs> 13 14 years i could never part with it even though it didn't fit me anymore the style wasn't quite right um but i couldn't part with it because it was my outfit it was part of my outfit that i wore as um, i left the reception um, of the venue after our wedding so I've turned it into something that I can continue wearing today.